Um, so the game is cool, starting actually. now, and I'm just gonna play with the mace. I still don't know how. I was gonna say I don't know how you get them to transform. Whenever I click on oh, them, right it brings click, up the right players' click. individual. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know it was right click. I kept left clicking, and it just kept bringing up the player card. That's pretty cool. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so wow, this is it, guys. I mean, this is the last game of semifinals, game three. So this, the last two games have brought us to this moment where now either one of these teams can win. This one game decides who is playing for that one hundred dollar ultimate diamond bundle, and which team is not. So I mean, this game is is so far potentially the most important game of this entire tournament. All right, and we are at 20 seconds, so in the upper left-hand corner, we have Team Death Squad consisting of ULA in the Police Striker, Happy Death in the Classic Striker, and Lethal Poison in the Samson Osprey, and their opponents, the green team in the bottom right, it will be Festa Present 3, Valinor in the Steampunk Osprey, Boomhauer in the Steampunk Helix, and Weiwei in the Apache Helix. Not going 100% Steampunk there, but uh, yeah, Thar. Interesting counterpick. Um, not Wrath, not like the counterpick from Heihan on Stop. Uh, so this does have a mid, does not have a lockbox. Uh, a lot of people don't like Wrath because of that lockbox, um, and a lot of people like Wrath because of the lack of mid. So it's very, very interesting to see, uh, you know, the different opinions between people. And I'm really, really hoping that the ping numbers I'm seeing in the, bo in the bottom right, in the bottom of the screen, are not going to stay consistent <laughs> throughout the game. So, uh, Steve, if you are ready, we are going to get this started. I am ready, man. I can't wait to see what's going to happen here. <laughs> Me as well. So we will go in three, two, one, go. And these money makers going down pretty normal game. Uh, will each team socket a lunchbox? So we do have Carbon Team with lunchbox on the front socket of the fort. Uh, I would say it's more typical to put it on that uh, on that ledge. Um, and there is an empty spot for the for the green team, so I'm guessing a lunchbox will eventually go in that spot. However, it doesn't look like it's going to happen during pregame. And uh, lots of boxers down for the uh, for the Carbon Team. I mean, boxers are heavily used because they are really good in terms of health to cost. Um, Carbon team going for mid does look like green teams going for to secure their close first and the upper right hand corner first. So uh, I don't know this. And they, they haven't even scouted them. Yeah, that's so what I was going to say. Realize I no mean, one's best of yeah. would have scouted by now, but they're so focused on getting these two specific, like basically those those and, outposts that kind of yeah. go out on like two arms out to extend on the thing that they haven't realized. And now, I wait, mean, wait, now did scout the island. Late. And he, he saw, I mean, normally the upper left-hand corner would probably go for the island because it has three sockets and all that stuff. It's really good. Uh, way, way scouted. Now they can go straight for this island. So it's going to be, um, I don't know, if Death Squad is going to prefer having the mid or having a corner or whatnot and having to fight for mid. But now the map split is going to be pretty clear as no one went for the same outpost at the same time. And uh, yeah, Death Squad having that mid. Uh, let's see if that actually pays off for them because, you know, the corners have a lot of sockets, so you will be able to get the generators and the money makers down. Um, however, Death Squad now doing some harass on the on the green units. Probably not going to be that. Uh, oh, leave the poison. Oh, I think he was. I don't know. He was typing or something like that. He was just sitting in the air, getting fired on. He was finished off um, eventually by. Maybe one had of the new sneeze. Hmm? Maybe he just had a really big sneeze or something. That's it's why very, can, very uh, possible, yeah. <laughs> or uh, maybe he clicked off there. screen or something like that. I don't know. But now the green team does have both corners, and um, I'm gonna say all that the that all that the carbon team has now is that mid with plenty of boxers at this point. Um, so yeah, now Festive Present Three is uh, doing quick scout at mid. Now, what's really interesting is what is the better advantageous overall? Having that mid, which is a power station, and you have that beautiful mid launching platform to the rest of the map, or having those two factories at the outside of the map, which are like the least oh, strategic positions, but you have that 40% build reduction on That's there. I mean, which ones really are, are more valuable overall? Yeah, I, I would personally say the ones with the sockets. Death Squad has been able to neutralize this top right outpost. Uh, threw away a lot of boxes and a couple tanks, and a few of the tanks, or a few of the units actually have reached this right outpost. Uh, they also did send out from mid, I'm not really exactly sure why, but a couple of tanks here at the, at the, at the, car, at the green fort. I think those were all just kind of wasted units. Um, they probably lost a lot more than they killed. Uh, and they, you know, neutralizing outpost for a quick second, I mean, it's not really that productive. So, uh, Festa Present 3 has not socketed anything at any of the corner outposts yet which is a little surprising to see. I would think that that's one of the major things. I mean, having the outposts themselves is really great as well. Um, 
but and uh, Boomhauer is busy selling off actually a bunch of the tanks that were there oh. uh, to actually turn around and convert them over into oh, he's uh, making seekers. Like seekers. Now. Interesting. Well, but I mean, yeah, seekers actually, OP, man. Quite a few listen, of them. listen, man, seekers OP. <laughs> right now, still, everyone pretty much considers seekers OP. I mean, you just need like two or three of them, and they'll 100% shut down any mech that wants to be there. Um, then uh, it's probably not that bad anymore. Maybe four should be about the right number. But uh, now we do have a fight going between the, the mid and the right. And I would say that the uh, that, that festive present probably has the advantage at this point. Um, well, the grinder isn't going right in the face of... Okay, now the grinder is going to be uh, attacking the, the, the Longhorn. Um, and now, now Death Squad is forced to pull back. And festive present free with quite a lot more units than Death Squad at this point. And, and I mean, maybe people say Seekers are OP, but I don't know, those grinders really tend to be huge game yeah. changers. I mean, they come out and they just suck up so much damage, and now the fact that when they see something, they actually speed up to get to it a little bit faster, uh, it really, um, I don't know, th these things are, uh, it, there needs to, someone's going to have to really uh, get creative to find a, a very efficient way to counter them, because right now there's no really efficient way to, uh, yeah. really truly counter a grinder other than just having a ton of tanks out on the field. Well, I mean, most uh, it's the, kind of the consensus standard answer to how do you counter grinders is pretty much with micro. You need to be there, you need to move your tanks away, grinders get confused and all you have to do is micro them away. Grinders dropped in the middle of unguarded units do wonders, but gr grinders dropped next to maintained units are not that amazing. Um, Although right now they are probably still more amazing than they should be. Um, uh, one roller, stray roller, gonna be finished off, I think, unless the poison comes to oh. save it. We've got a single necro out on the field trying to restore something, but uh, Boom Power oh. does notice it, takes it out in the process. I see. But uh, Death Squad is actually winding up that they are kind of pushing um, Festive Present back a little bit. But yeah, I mean, my point when you're in a 1v1 is kind of easy enough because those outpost energy last a long time. But when you're trying to micro in a 3v3 with so much damage and shooting and energy coming in all over the place, it's really just not the same thing. And oh. really, I mean, personally, what's up? Uh, Happy Death was able to snipe a Seeker, but he did pay the price and got finished off by uh, Valinor. And actually, I, I don't remember who the second one was, I think, but there was another. I think probably Gloomhauer that actually caught him in the act. Oh, Lethal Poison, really low on health, but let's see. If, oh, getting finished off by nope. Valinor there. And, not uh, getting yeah. out of there alive, but... Yeah, I mean, mechs, mechs really, um, they should, the damage should scale b based on whether you're playing 1v1, 2v2, or 3v3, because in 1v1, it takes it's too much to kill one mech on top of another, but in 3v3, mechs are dying left and right all the time, so, like, if you're, like, 3v3 should almost be the base for it, and then in right. 2v2 and 1v1, the damage should actually scale up to make it count, you know, to that, make that, sense that was, based on it. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense, actually. Cause yeah, I mean, just when you see these one v one tournaments and stuff, they just the mechs almost never die. And in three v three, it's so much more exciting and so much more entertaining and everything because you know you know for a fact that you got to be careful because you can die very easily. And in one v one, I mean, people just walk around as if they're invincible. Well, in the same way, a death in one v one is that much more detrimental than a death in three v three. When you die in three v three, you do have two teammates to help compensate for you. Same thing in two v two with one teammate. But in one v one, when you die. You're your units are 100% alone, and so is the rest of the map. So, you know, it's not just certain things scale, but everything scales, if you know what I mean. Well, maybe now yet, too, with the fact that there is that five second delay before you can do buyback, it could be something yeah. a little bit different, too. But, I mean, I'm not saying it should scale like, you know, in, in a 1v1, you should be doing the damage of three mechs type of thing, but maybe like 1.25% of normal type of thing, you know? Right, right. Um, Just a, a, little, a little something. Lethal Poison doing a quick scout at, at the bottom left island. Does really see that it's not really that defended. Might be able to actually pick off one of the units, but uh, Happy Death and uh, well, Happy Death was able to bomb quite a lot of units down. He's still doing bombing runs, and there's this, there's this just this huge artillery war fight again. Pretty much the same thing that we saw on Wrath, but a different location. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just huge a lot of artillery purpose. wars, with, but this time with bombs. Yeah, well, you know, plus bombs. I, I don't remember if there were that many bombs in that last one when Mimo and Heihan nonstop were playing, but uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't remember seeing too many bombs. I, I, I don't remember seeing bombs in that one, but a double kill I heard coming out from a Valinor right there. Oh, yeah, there. I turned that uh, off. I had to because of the Samson rolls. <laughs> 3v1 power play right now. Huge potential advantage for Best of Presence. Oh, and they the last really player does go down. 
Oh, Boomhauer. Oh, getting killed by following Seeker Missiles. Oh, I forgot to suggest that. Seeker Lifetime. Seeker Missile Lifetime is just way too high. <laughs> uh, yeah, they follow you forever. But now we do have a... Okay, now Death Squad is the one getting pushed back. 106 to 127, so it's not huge, but it's it's significant enough to say that Best of Present 3 is clearly in the lead. Uh, they're bombing like crazy. They have a lot of Bertha down on the field. They have enough Sonya to really stop or at least uh, soften the blow. Um, and look at these three rollers out here for Death Squad. I don't know what they decide or what they might be uh, thinking about doing. Okay, let's see here. Boomhauer with a few Brutes. Already level... Oh, a level 8 Helix can carry three Brutes, and that will neutralize his outpost really, really fast. Um, or not as fast as I thought it would because outpost uh, health is or outpost armor is 40. Oh, but lots of brutes there. I don't think he. I, okay, well there is one blocking uh, Longhorn and lots of uh, bear traps, so it will be easy enough for the carbon team to actually retake this outpost. And Boomhauer does survive that attack, but it's it you know, gave Valinor a big window of opportunity to try yeah. to move and push in onto that center a little bit more. And I think each and every one of the Bertha cannons on Death Squad's side are now destroyed, which just gives a huge, huge advantage to Best of Present 3. They've got a ton of Berthas out on the field just blasting in right. left and right. And Boomhauer has not stopped continuing with this brute attack. Uh, the outpost does go back under carbon control, but Boomhauer with a lot more brutes. Brute ha brutes have so much health, they're pretty much Dillos. Um, and uh, I mean, every... S oh! Oh, okay. Stupid creeps on the map. Walking anyway, sorry. Dillos. Yeah, for the most part, they are walking Dillos instead of rolling Dillos or treading Dillos. But look at... Oh, man! Uh, Happy Death with a lot of tanks at the top. I never saw this, actually. Where are these going? You I would assume these it? are on attack. No, I didn't. Uh, sorry, I was distracted by some weird guy <laughs> talking to me here. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we gotta do something about but, that guy. I but where you. are they gonna move with them? They are just gonna start... Oh, man, waypoints suck. He wants an outpost. Yeah. Yeah, and they can't move right, unfortunately. Actually, uh, he's testing it right now to see. And he's I mean, like, they okay, need to just if I go here, they need now to link, I can do link, it where link. he wants it. Uh, and Festive mm -hmm. Prison 3 is really, really oh, focused on this stuff. Oh, but that's still going where he wants it to go. <laughs> oh, but that's man. funny, like, yeah, he went out a little bit, moved a few, tested to see where they're going to go the way he wanted them to go. Yeah. And yet he is actually going to send them out on a base attack, because clearly if they were going through the outpost, they would have yeah. head up here. There are no just, uh, Seekers know, in support, though. Oh. Unless he's just trying to use this just to, to kind of soften up all these defenses, but here once again, those grinders yeah. are coming out and those grinders are And the just, goalies in defense oh. as well. And the defender's advantage will easily allow this to go in Festive Present 3's favor. There's a lot of goalie here for the Carbon team, but there are a lot more for the green team. Um, this there's a lot of there's a lot of mayhem out on the field right now, and uh, at this point, Festive Present 3 has Still kept their unit advantage, 99 to 125 at this point. Uh, the Carbon team has been able to neutralize this right outpost, but it's not really going to do them too much good. Uh, ULA, oh, yeah, getting back to that power station before he actually gets finished off. But uh, but yeah, now uh, Festive Present 3 has hit their unit cap, actually. Oh, well, has, is at their unit cap because they have lost that right outpost. Um, oh, and infantry going down by the Carbon team, probably not really that great of a move. Um, because what will an outpost grab do besides grab it for about one second? Um, and at this point, yeah. The, Death Squad have, has kind of spent a lot of their units in that last push. Um, unfortunately, because the current system is not that great, uh, they weren't able to really utilize those uh, those tanks the way that uh, they probably wanted to. No, they definitely, I'm sure they had a much different plan in mind. Uh, Festa Present, they had the Goliaths in the queue. They knew, like, they knew most likely that something was going to be coming, and they knew they needed to be ready for something, and just... Um, I mean, it was a great, great idea on Death Squad. It just, unfortunately, it went through mass amounts of radar coverage that Fest the President 3 had, and they had more than enough time to yeah. react to what they needed to. And now all that it is is you just, they just, uh, Fest the President is pretty much doing nothing but just waiting for their birthdays to eventually annihilate everything. And Death oh. Squad, knowing this, is like, you know what, yeah. we have to now push they're pushing. Out because if we stay here, we've lost everything anyway. So you yeah. might as well push out. Man. You know the shit that's really going to hopefully do too much, but you might as well do something because you can't come out on top with the current situation. That's probably Up what they're pretty much thinking. and tons of Necros coming out. Oh. And Devastators. Yeah, lots of Devastators uh, for the Carbon Team. Boomhauer is actually made, well, just one. So, lots, hey, one Devastator is a lot of Devastator, okay? It's a lot of Devastation, okay, Steve? Hey, I'm not saying that it's not, man. <laughs> I'm just watching this Necro. Hopefully, uh, it can bring back, uh, cause I think that's a, oh no, that was a Gemini. Oh, I think they were hoping to get a, uh, Goliath out of that. 
And in this situation, with a team like Festive Crescent 3, it's very, very unlikely that Death Squad will be able to do anything really about this. I personally think if they were able to send all those tanks to that top right corner, they would have actually been able to grab that outpost because although it was defended, it was the defense was kind of nothing compared to all those tanks that they had moving out, but instead they were forced to push the right, and unfortunately it was not successful. Wait, wait, go, uh, able to finish off ULA on the ground. Lethal Poison almost going to get finished off as well. Does Wei have enough energy to do it? And yes, he does. And now only Happy Death left out on the field. I don't really think there is uh, many directions that uh, Death Squad can go at this point. Not really. I mean, pretty much getting their backs pushed up against the wall. Um, I, honestly, I'm looking at this map. I really don't even see much areas of opportunity for them right now. Um, I, I would like to say, yeah, oh, yeah, they can definitely do this and that and come back from it. Uh, truth be told, I, I just, I'm, if there is a window, guys, at least I'm not seeing it. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult, and uh, that's kind of the nature of the game. That's the nature of a lot of RTS-style games to begin with. Uh, Lethal Poison, whoa, really low on health, but uh, probably will. Oh, does get finished off by a Devastator! What the hell? Uh, but, oh, Happy Death here might be able to neutralize this outpost. No, he w does uh, does realize that there are way too many units there, and there was actually a brute in that outpost, so he wouldn't have been able to actually finish that off. But uh, now, the car now the green team, Festo Present 3, will be able to easily make it to this left outpost. Uh, there is quite a lot of defenses here, but uh, you know, if they can neutralize the outpost, then it probably is going to be a uh, pretty simple task to actually kill the rest of the units around it. Most likely, yeah. I mean, that's the only advantage right now that Death Squad has. They can at least still keep deploying things, but uh, there's just too much damage and firepower coming in here. When you've got two Devastators now, out on the field, blasting at the same location, yeah, you just, you know it's gonna hurt, and you know that there's really not much that you can do to counter that. <laughs> yeah, um, man, I'm still, I'm still kinda, I'm still kinda, uh, frustrated about those waypoints, man. That was, that was, that was, every time I see waypoints fail in this game, I get really, really frustrated. <laughs> um, but now the, gr the green team gonna be able to easily move up against that top. Happy Death, Happy Death already calling the GG, um, and uh, yeah, uh, it does look like Festive Crescent 3 will just move all the rest of their tanks out. And uh, even though, even though the, uh, Death Squad might be able to, to mount a defense here at the fort, they're going to lose all their outposts. And with that domination and with that, pretty much uh, a complete loss. I'm trying to take a look right here because I'm happy to throw out the GG, but it looks like that the rest of the team is not quite ready to get there <laughs> because uh, two, uh, two Goliaths did kind of get deployed at, out in the base here, so... Uh, and they're still kind of lying around. Uh, I'm not really 100% sure if they are all conceding or if it's just uh, more of a happy death kind of saying, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's GG. Yeah. But, He's know, not, whatever, it's not a concession. Gonna... It's more of a, okay, this is probably GG. I'm still going to play, no, but uh, yeah. He was able to neutralize that right outpost for a brief moment in time, but happy death getting finished off on the way out by Boomhauer and Valinor getting that follow. And it does look like we will have a top two seed final at this point. Um... It does look like Lethal Poison in ULA. <laughs> Happy Death says Twin Peaks after. <laughs> Not in that pool, bro. <laughs> Devastator leading the charge. The goalies trying to defend. They're uh, not breaking through, though. Guys, they are not breaking out. through. That's, that's kind of... That's kind of one of the biggest things about Thar. One of the biggest complaints, actually, is that, um, you know, they... The, every single outpost, for the most part, has a choke point, especially the forts. Uh, the forts have these bridges leading out, and oh my god, they're actually moving out with these goalies. That is really, really hilarious. <laughs> it just, it, it's unbelievable the fact that, yeah, because, uh, because you have the bridge and it's such narrow choke points on here, I mean, they just had three gollies out there, and they destroyed pretty much everything that was coming in at that moment. I mean, it, golly after golly after Devastator just kept getting wiped out. Um, I, the, the path would definitely have, I think, would be served to have a little bit more uh, openness to it, shall we say. But right. maybe once we get the map editor and, and some of uh, some people's creative hands, it might be right. interesting to see what creations they come up with. 
Yeah, I mean, definitely that's one of the things that we are waiting for, Map Editor. Uh, but uh, probably the most imminent thing we are waiting for is the end of this game. Creep uh, finally, yeah, Creep, creep Pushing <laughs> now coming out. There's nothing left at the Carbon Fort, so this is GG. Best of Present 3 taking this victory on Thar over Death Squad, and they will move on to the finals and face Mimo. Uh, so we will have a top two seed finish battle clash, the battle we've all been waiting for. So guys, stay tuned for the finals.